Welcome back to A20, Special Relativity. In this section, we want to discuss the classical Doppler effect. Um, the Doppler effect was first noted by Christian Doppler, hence the name, in 1842. And what we're discussing as a Doppler effect is a frequency change when moving from one reference frame into another. So this can happen, for example, if the source of a sound wave is moving, like uh, we experience when a car is passing by. The application of the Doppler effect are, are numerous. Um, we can use the Doppler effect to measure the velocity of a speeding car. Uh, we can use the Doppler effect to measure the distance of distance galaxies. Um, as a reminder, the velocity is of a wave, so the velocity in which the wave is propagating, is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. So when we move relative to the source of the wave, we see this apparent change in frequency. But let's introduce this topic, not in my words, but in the ones of Sheldon Cooper uh, from the Big Bang Theory. We go to the party. I don't care if anybody gets it. I'm going as the Doppler effect. Right. No, it's not. If I have to, I can demonstrate. What's the sound wave of a moving car? So what time does the costume parade start? The parade? Yeah, so the judges can give out the prizes for best costume. You know, most frightening, most authentic, most accurate visualization of a scientific principle. Oh, Sheldon, I'm sorry, but there aren't going to be any parades or judges or prizes. This party is just going to suck. Oh, come on, it's going to be fun, and you all look great. I mean, look at you. Thor and, and oh, Peter Pan, that's so cute. Actually, Penny, he's wrong. Not Peter Pan. <laughs> I got a handful of pixie dust with your name on it. No, you don't. I hate what Sheldon's supposed to be. Oh, he's the Doppler effect. Yes. It's the apparent change in the frequency of a wave caused by relative motion between the source of the wave and the observer. <laughs> Doppler effect. <laughs> All right. The Doppler effect. So now we have it. All right. So let's look at a specific situation here in which we have a sound wave emitted by a moving car. The car is moving with a velocity u and is emitting sound, maybe the engine or the horn of the car. If you then look at the wavelength, as we observe, so we have an observer here. As we observe the, uh, the wavelengths, the wavelength is actually modified because the crests of the moving car, the horn, the engine, they are moving themselves with the velocity u times t0, which is the period, which is equal to u times 1 over the frequency as the frequency emitted by the car at rest. So the wavelength is modified to lambda minus u times 1 over f0. So then we can use this equation here to calculate the wavelength uh, to the frequency as observed by this person here, which is the velocity of the moving wave divided by the modified or the, the observed wavelength. And so that's v, v over lambda minus u times 1 over f0 or f0 times 1 over 1 minus uv. All right, so we see that the frequency is modified when we observe the moving car. And you have all experiences in life already. So let's look at a few more examples of this. Let me just share this little video. It's a very short video. So you we were able to hear the change in frequency in this example. Here's another one. So this is interesting now. Um, so you, if heard exactly what I was describing before, the sound of a moving vehicle. In the first case, a car honking. In the second case, 
a European fire truck passing by. And so there's an additional part to the story here. If I would ask you, please do make the sound of a fire truck. I think not many of you would say Nina, 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 which is the sound of this fire truck for a European. There's a few more of those examples which are really weird. Uh, if I ask you to make the sound of a rooster, um, you and I will probably disagree on the sound of a rooster. I would say kikiriki, and you would make a sound which is rather unfamiliar to me. So that's just a fun fact on the side, but um, this was a short introduction to the classical Doppler effect. And in the next video, we will look at the relativistic Doppler effect.